Hi guys, good day. It's me, Teacher MJ. Our topic for today is all about the rhombus, finding all sides and all angles. So without further ado, let's do this topic. Alright, by the way, class, before answering this kind of illustration, this kind of problem, you need to know first what are the properties of a rhombus. If you don't know about the properties of a rhombus, I will just leave a link in the description below with regards to the properties of a rhombus. Alright, so let's start. So let's try to find the angles first. Finding the angles first, so we have given angle LED, which is 22 degrees. We have given length, LO is equals to 13, and EO, diagonal EO, is equals to 24. Alright, so let's find the angles first. Okay, let's start with the angles. Um, one of the properties of a rhombus, it says, okay, it says that diagonal bisect the opposite angles. What do you mean by bisect, sir? The word bisect there, it means that they cut the angles into half. The word bisect, cutting an object into half. So this diagonal EO, this diagonal EO, cut this opposite angles into half. What do, what are the opposite angles, sir? The opposite angles are this one, angle E and angle O, angle L and angle B, V. These are opposite angles. So what would be the measure of angle E is the same with angle O because opposite angles are congruent. That's according to its properties. And the diagonal EO bisect this angle, they cut this angle into half. So therefore, if this is 22 degrees, this angle here, okay, this angle here is also 22 degrees. If this is 22 degrees, this is also 22 degrees because opposite angles are congruent. So this is 22 degrees, so therefore we can say that angle... VED or DEV, that's the same class. Let, let's just write it VED. VED is equal to 22 degrees. Angle VOD is 22 degrees. Angle LOD, angle LOD is equal to 22 degrees. Alright, so we're done with this opposite angles. Next step is we need to... Uh, remember the one of the properties of a rhombus it says that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other what do you mean by perpendicular sir the diagonals intersect to each other bisect each other okay they diagonals bisect each other and they form a 90 degrees right angle that's the meaning of perpendicular class two two lines intersecting each other and form 90 degrees angle that's what we call by perpendicular lines so we can say that EO line EO is perpendicular to EO is perpendicular to line LV. Why is that, sir? Because when they intersect to each other, they form a 90 degrees right angle. So this angle here is 90 degrees. This one is 90 degrees. This one is also 90 degrees, and this one is 90 degrees. So we can say that this angle L D, this is D, point D, angle L, D, E. Okay, let me just write it. Angle L, D, E is equals to 90 degrees. Angle V, D, E or E, D, V. It's dep it depends on nucleus. That's actually the same. V, D, E or E, D, V. Let's just write it V, D, E. V, D, E is 90 degrees. So, angle V, D, O. Angle V, D, O is equals to 90 degrees. And angle ODL, ODL is 90 degrees. So, we're almost there, class. Knocking one. This angle. So, what would be the measure of this angle? So, let's... Do not forget, class, that in a triangle... Okay? Let me just erase this one. In a triangle... Any triangle, class. Any kinds of triangle. Isosceles, equilateral... A scalene, acute triangle, any kind of triangle, the sum of interior interior angles, it must be 180 degrees. Okay, what do you mean by that, sir? If you draw a triangle, any kinds of triangle, the sum of these angles must equals to 180 degrees. The sum of their angles is equals to 180 degrees. Any kind of triangle class, if it's right, obtuse triangle or scalene triangle, equilateral, isosceles, it should be 180 degrees, the sum of interior, interior angles. So, if we draw this one, this angle here, okay, this angle, 
if we draw this if we draw this triangle LDE so let me draw that triangle LDE E this is E this is D and L if we draw this one this is 22 degrees we already know that this is 22 degrees and this is 90 according to our illustration so therefore what would be this angle so to get that because we already know that this triangle, the sum of uh, interior angles, it must, is, it must be 180. So we can just add this one and then we subtract it to 180. So 90 plus 22, this is 2. Um, 9 plus 2 is 11. 112, this is 112. We subtract that to 180. So let me just erase this one. Do not forget class that any triangle, the sum of interior angles it must be 180 so let me just subtract this to 180 minus 112 this is so carry one this is seven this is ten ten minus two is eight seven minus one is six sixty eight so therefore this angle here must be sixty eight degrees if this is sixty eight this must be sixty eight because this Diagonal LV cut this cut the the opposite angles L and V into half. So this is also 68 degrees and opposite angles are congruent. That's according to the definition or the properties of rhombus. So this is 68. Alright, so 68, 68. So we have so if we add this one, 68 plus 22 plus 90, it should be 180. This and also this triangle, 68, 90, and 22, it should be 180. So we're done plus with the Okay, we're done with the angles. Now one of the properties of a rhombus, it says that the that the consecutive angles are supplementary. Let's check if this is equals to 180. Supplementary class, it means that if you add the two angles, the sum must be 180 degrees. So, angle E, angle E alone class, this one, this angle E, okay, this angle E, so 22 plus 22, that would be 44 degrees. If we add that to angle L, because it says that Two, ang two consecutive angles must be supplementary. Okay, E plus L must be 180. L plus O must be 180. O plus V must be 180. So, angle L, this one, angle L. So, this is equals to 68 plus 68. 6, carry 1, 12, 13, 136. Okay, 136, angle L. If we add that, 44 degrees plus 136. This should be 6 plus 4 is 10, carry 1, 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 3, 8, 180. That's correct. Therefore, our answer is correct. Let me just write the last angle. Angle ELD. Angle ELD is 68 degrees. Angle OLD. Angle OLD is equals to 68 degrees. Angle OVD, angle OVD is equals to 68 degrees, last one. Angle EVD, angle EVD is equals to 68 degrees. Alright, so we're done class with the angles. Alright, so you can pause the video because we are dealing now with the sides. That's all for the angles class, we're done with the angles. So let's... Let's continue with the sign. So let me erase this one. You can pause the video with regards to the angles. Alright, so let's continue with the angles. I know with the side, sorry. Let's continue with the side. Let me just erase this angles class for you not to be confused. So we're dealing now with the sides. Alright, so now let's go to the sides. So since LO is 13. The side LO is 13, therefore, one of the properties of a rhombus, it says that all sides are equal. So, if this is 13, OV must be 13, VE must be 13, and EL must be 13. Okay, let me just erase this angle class. So, we're dealing now with the sides. So, we can say that uh, line 
OV or VE, VO, that's the same class. OV or VO. OV is equals to 13. VE is equals to 13. And EL is equals to 13. According to its properties that all sides are congruent with regards to the properties of the rhombus. Alright, next is we have given EO is equals to 24. This side EO, uh, no, this diagonal EO is equals to 24. And we already know that the two diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other. It means that they cut themselves into half. So therefore, this ED, this line ED is equivalent to line OD. And this line LD this line LD is equivalent to line VD. Alright? But do not forget, class, that this diagonal and this diagonals are not, these are not equal. Okay? This e EO is not equal to LV. But this ED and DO is equals to each other. This one ED, this ED and DO are equal. LD and DV are equal. Okay, so we have given EO is 24, therefore this ED is 12 and this OD is also 12. So why is that 12? Because EO is 24, they cut, okay, they, this EO, this diagonal EO is 24 and then LV cut this EO into half, bisect EO. Okay, the word bisect there, it means that they cut an object into half. So, EO, diagonal EO, bisect by LV, they cut this EO into half. So, this is, if this is 24, EO is 24, therefore, this ED is 12 and this OD is 12. Alright, so we have 12, 12, so therefore, ED is 12 and OD is equals to 12. And EO is 24. So, to find this side, this, this length class, this LD, to find this LD, we can draw a triangle. We can draw this one, LED. So, let me draw that triangle. Okay, triangle LED. Okay, we have triangle LED. And we have the given EL, which is 13. And we have ED, which is 12. And we are told to find this one. Alright, so to find that one class, you need to use the Pythagorean Theorem. Sir, where, where, when can we use Pythagorean Theorem? We can use Pythagorean Theorem if the triangle is a right triangle. How do you know if the triangle is a right triangle? One angle measures 90 degrees. Okay, that's the thing that you need to remember with regards to a right triangle. One angle, this angle D, measures 90 degrees. Therefore, this triangle is a right triangle. Alright, so if it, if it is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem finding this side, this LD. So to find this one, we can use Pythagorean theorem. Let me erase this one. So we have the illustration here, class LED. So L LE is 13 and ED is 12. So we find this one, this, this side. So to find that side, use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have, okay, let me just erase this one, class. So we have the, the formula that is C squared is equals to A squared plus B squared. And our C class, always the longest side, this side. Okay, C is always the longest side. Don't forget about that. The Pythagorean theorem, C is always the hypotenuse, the longest side. So this is 13. So copy 13 squared is equals to A squared, A class. It could be interchanged. It could be here or here. So let's just put that this is our A, this one. LD, so we have A squared plus B squared, this is B, ED is 12, 12 squared, so we have 13 squared, so let me just write the triangle again, L, E, D, this is 13, this is 12, this is the unknown, so we put this our A, the unknown, and 12 here is our B, this side, and 13 is the longest side, alright? The hypotenuse. So 13 squared, that's 169. 13 times 13, that's 169 equals copy A squared, 
plus 12 times 12, that's 144. 12 times 12 is 144. So to get the value of A, just transpose this 144 from right to left and it will change the sign. Do not forget, once you transpose an equation from this equal sign, you always change the sign. Okay? So this becomes 169 minus 144 equals A squared. So 169 minus 144, let me subtract that. 169 minus 144, this is 5, 2, 25. Alright, so this is 25 is equals to A squared. And then extract square root both sides. Cancel this one. So A is equals to square root of 25, that is 5. So a is equals to, let me just write it like this. This is 20, square root of 25 is 5. Cancel, square and square root. So this is a. So a is equals to 5. Therefore, this line LD is equals to 5. If LD is 5, therefore DV must be 5. Alright, so let me just finalize it. So we have a is equals to 5. So LD... Okay, let me just write LD is 5, line LD is 5, and line VD is also 5. Therefore, this line LV, the diagonal LV is equals to 10. So that's it, class. That's how you solve for the properties of, I uh, know, that's all the, how, that's all, that's how you find the, the, the angles and the sides of the, Rumble. So if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe, share it to your friends class and to your classmates. And you have a great day. I hope you learned something new today. If you have some questions class, please do leave a comment on the comment section below. We will be answering that one. Okay? Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.